Hey everyone, welcome to the booth of Create Text Colors. I'm Chris Arpin, and today we are going to do a fun little project that's perfect for the do it yourself or something you guys can do at home. Uh, we are going to paint one of these little kids' uh, balance bikes. Um, this one is particularly for actually my son, and that's what gave us the idea. He's got a birthday coming up, and uh, he couldn't decide what color he wants, so I'm going to surprise him, and we're going to actually do a little bit of both colors that he kept telling me he wanted. So. We're going to get right into it. Uh, it's going to be a very cool, simple, quick, and easy to do project. And I'm going to start this again because I don't like that. Hey everyone, welcome to the booth of Create Text Colors. I'm Chris Arpin, and in this video, we are going to do a fun little project that is perfect for the, the home painter to do it yourself we are going to do a, uh, a balance bike. So this is a little kid's bike frame. It's actually for my son. He's got a birthday coming up and we thought this would be a cool project to show and, uh, and to do because he couldn't make up his mind on the color. So I'm gonna surprise him and he's gonna get both colors that he kept talking about. So we thought what better way to do that than with our candies. So we're gonna get right into it. We're gonna show you exactly how to do it. We're gonna use all of our products and show you guys how simple it is to do something really cool and, and really simple. So to start, this is an aluminum frame bike. Uh, it already has a, a factory finish on it. Uh, it was a silver, but I didn't really like the silver. I like our silver a lot better. So we're gonna start with our silver sealer. And this is fantastic uh, in terms of a background color for anything that you're gonna have that's transparent, you know, that you can see through the color. Uh, it gives a great ground coat with a lot of pop. And if you guys watch a lot of the videos I do, I love a lot of that bling, so more is better. So we're gonna start with a silver sealer and then we're gonna go over the top of that with our Hot Rod Sparkle White, just to push it a little harder and really get a lot of that glitter bomb effect. So I think it's gonna look really cool. Uh, so again, to start, it's an aluminum frame. Uh, we're gonna prep everything because it is brand new, right out of the box. We just pulled off these decals that were on here, cleaned that with a little bit of wax and grease remover, uh, and gave it a light scuff with a red scotch brite pad. That's all it needed. Again, it's brand new, so there's not a lot of things that you gotta worry about. Maybe a few little nicks in the finish here. We just can feather that out, and again, that's 320. That's about the equivalent of a red scotch brite pad. And because we're using our silver sealer, it's gonna cover that 320 scratch perfectly. If you guys were going over something and you were using this as a ground coat or like a base coat, and you were using finer metallics and pearls, I would recommend going a little bit finer in the grit. You know, it's not going to cover that tooth that's left behind as well as our sealer would. So if you were using this for, for the base coat for another color, like I said, the finer metallics and pearls, I would go 600 to, to 800 actually, believe it or not. Certain colors will have a tendency to show those sand scratches. But because we're using our sealer, it's going to make all that go away. And, and honestly, two coats, like a coat and a half is going to cover this perfectly. So I have my, my rack set up here, um, which is going to make things a lot easier. So if you guys have something similar to this, you can set something up and you can hang it. I prefer to hang the parts that I'm painting uh, because it's going to give me a lot easier access to all the edges. And if you have the ability, like what I'm going to show you guys here too, I use uh, mechanics wire. I call it mechanics wire. I think it's called bailing wire. But uh, an auto parts store will have this in stock. It's uh, our Napa right around here. That's where I got it from. It's very cheap and it is indispensable for painting stuff that's hard to handle or stuff that's hard to, to set up on a table. I wouldn't want to spray this on a table again because A, you're going to get overspray off of everything and, and there's really no good way to set this up where you don't have an edge that's going to be not painted. So you're going to have to go back and touch up here and there. Uh, and if, if you can have something where it's sitting like this and it's stable, you're going to have a lot less chance of accidents or something knocking it over or something getting into it or dropping on the floor or putting a handprint in it because you try to catch it and then you got to start all over. So a little bit of mechanics wire, I twisted it up, I made a little mount for my fork and I have it going through the front of the head tube here so I can hang this right next to it. I'm going to do silver sealer on both of these and I'm going to walk away, let that dry and then we're going to come back and I'm going to actually put on those two coats of Hot Rod Sparkle White because I really want this thing to be glittery. So. Uh, you can see on the table here, I have my Hot Rod Sparkle White, I have my 4050, that's where, when we move on to the next step of the color phase, I'm going to mix my candies. I have two pearls, so I have a Wicked Pearl Yellow and our Wicked Pearl Orange, and I have a corresponding candy for those, so I have our Grabber Orange and our Lemon Yellow. Uh, so I'm going to use the 4050 as a mixing base medium in terms of our candy carrier to apply that candy. So what I'll do first is mix my pearl 
with the candy to make a candy pearl and I'll slowly thin that out or actually add more candy to make the color more transparent over that silver. So I just kind of want a gradual fade. So once we get all that done, we're going to actually clear it uh, with our 2K, well our 2K, but uh, PPGs, this is what we recommend. Uh, 2K uh, urethane clear is going to give you the best result and that's really give you that high, high level of gloss. So we have two options here. We, uh, the stuff from PPG, which is what I recommend all the time, I, I like their product. This is the EC550, it's what we use here. If you've seen any of the other videos, I recommend this all the time. It's designed specifically for water-based or waterborne finishes. It's a great product. It's, it's a really, it has a nice, clear, crisp look to it. It's a very clear, clear. Um, if you don't have access to something like that, if you guys are, again, this is kind of a do-it-yourself project. This is great. Um, this is a company called Spraymax, and we've used this product before. I don't know if we've ever done video with it, but uh, this is actually a 2K clear. So there's a little bit of hardener in here, and when you pull the cap off, there's a little knob that you push on the bottom. You actually press that down, and it actually activates this clear. So this is a 2K clear in an aerosol, and it's fantastic. It's uh, their glamour, their clear glamour coat, and uh, we've used this uh, quite a bit actually at the coast, uh, the rendezvous and uh, it's a fantastic product. So this is another great option, especially if you don't have access to the spray equipment to, to apply a clear coat and something like this. It is kind of a smaller scale project, so there's really no reason to have to go crazy with it, but this is a perfect product for that. So again, you get a 2K, pro, uh, 2K clear in an aerosol, and it actually will have a, a pot life on it. Once you activate this, it does have a limited shelf life because it actually does have that hardener in it, and, it, and it's sand, sand and buffable, and it, it actually works extremely well. So it's another great option uh, from the guys over at Spray Max. So I am going to get this all wiped down and hung up, and I'll see you guys in a minute. Hey guys, I got the booth running, I am ready to spray, and one thing I wanted to just touch on real quickly, um, when I was handling that uh, part of the frame, I, was, I had bare hands all over it, and uh, that's one thing that I don't recommend, is I don't, you don't want to be touching uh, the product, or whatever it is that you're painting, um, with your bare hands, so try to minimize that as much as possible. So I do have gloves on, I typically do wear gloves. Um, I just went ahead and wiped that down with a mild wax and grease remover, just a simple pre-clean, just to make sure there's no hand prints or any kind of oils left over. So it's one thing that you guys should try to do, just keep that in mind, is try to minimize how much you're, you're bare handing anything at any time you're doing something, that, especially that's ready for paint, anything that's sanded and scuffed in between uh, coats of clear and, and all a uh, base coat. Uh, so keep that in mind, don't touch it with your bare hands. So I'm gonna go ahead, I have my uh, silver sealer, 10% 4011. I'm gonna spray it with my LPH 80. It's a great little gun for this project. Uh, and I'm right around 15 PSI. I got the E4 air cap. It's a 1-2 with an E4 air cap. So that's the biggest size you can get in this uh, spray gun. So I'm gonna go ahead, put two coats on here, and uh, see what that looks like. One coat will probably cover everything very well, um, but the second coat, maybe like a one and a half coats, just to make sure everything is nice and even. I'm gonna let that dry, and then we're gonna really pound on <laughs> the Hot Rod Sparkle White. So this is what coat number one looks like. Hey guys, we are back. Coat number one is dry, and I opted to just kind of go back, you can see, um, how well that covered. And again, that was silver. We put silver sealer over it. The only difference is our silver is just a little brighter in terms of that glitter effect. So I opted to just do one coat and just kind of wisp on a, a medium control coat just to make sure everything was even on the sides. Uh, it's very conical. This is all kind of rounded and, and oblong, so it's it's really hard to have kind of a blotchy look to it, you know. So that's one nice thing. It's very forgiving. So. I just let that dry. There's no reason to keep putting on more material if it doesn't need it. Like one coat, I'm good with that. It covered everything, any little areas that I didn't like, and it's golden. So it looks really good now, and I'm gonna go ahead and put on my Hot Rod Sparkle. So now, the Hot Rod Sparkle is an effect color. Uh, it's a large pearl flake. It's the largest pearl flake that we have in our line. So it's not intended for coverage or something to make it opaque. So it's hot rod sparkle white, but it's not gonna make that look white. We still wanna have that silver. It's just more of that effect. 
So one of the things when you're spraying that is I'm going to put it on, I'm going to put a lot of material on, but I'm only going to put it on in medium coats because I'm not trying to, I say pound it on, but I'm not trying to actually add a more material than is necessary. I want that flake to go on and that, that's all there is. Um, the only other tip I can give you guys when you're applying this is if you're using a PPS system like we have here, um, the, the PPS 2.0s or, or something similar to that, they have a lot of those strainers that are built into the lids. These are fine strainers. These are 200 microns. These are actually for solvent. The, the water is 125 and they have actually it's a blue color strainer. Um, pull these right out of the lid because that hot rod sparkle will get caught up in these strainers. So if you guys are using just a regular conventional cup, then you're fine. But uh, if you're spraying with a PPS system and you're like, what, how come nothing's coming out? It's chances are it's getting plugged in there. So that's really one of the only colors, our hot rod sparkle line, uh, that will get clogged up in those strainers. So I have my color mixed up, it's hot rod sparkle white. I mixed it with a little bit of our 4050. Now the reasoning behind that is I mix it three to one, so it's only 25% um, of the 4050. Of the but the 4050 has really good leveling properties, leveling characteristics, and it has a little bit more body. So it's gonna help kind of encapsulate that flake a little more than the carrier that's already in that flake. This is a wet flake that you're spraying. So when you're doing something like what we're gonna do here with candies, you want a smooth surface, as smooth as possible, because what will happen is the candy will start to hang up on those edges of the flake, and it'll start to look like dirt. And that's the last thing you wanna have is, is a dirty looking finish, but not because it was dirty, because of the metallic. So a lot of times guys will clear um, the metallics, especially if they're very coarse, but by adding the 4050, it kind of gives a little extra barrier, something to kind of melt over the edges of that flake and help it smooth out and lay down so you can go right to your candies. So I am going to get this in my gun. I'm using the same gun. It's an LPH 80. I'm actually, I'm, I didn't even clean it out. I just took off my other color. I'm gonna put this right on and continue spraying. That's the beauty part of this is this is just gonna cover. It's already silver that's in there. Any kind of overspray that goes out of the gun is just gonna go back onto that frame and then we're we'll gonna start covering it with our hot rod sparkle white. So you guys will see what that looks like. I don't know if you guys could really see that, but I was just spraying very wispy. That was probably like the equivalent of three coats, but it's just a very quick hand movement, just kind of blowing that flake over the top. So we're gonna let that dry up. I'm gonna hit this second part of the frame and, uh, and we're gonna see what we got. Again, I like my preference is more is better. So we'll see what that looks like and uh, we'll see you guys in a minute. Okay guys, we are back. My Hot Rod Sparkle White is completely dry. And again, I can show you, I don't know if you can hear it, if it's gonna sound, you're gonna be able to pick up that sound on camera, but it is actually very smooth in terms of the texture, which is gonna be way more beneficial for me to go over this with our candies and, and those colors to, to get a nice, even kind of a consistent finish. So, uh, you can see that I kind of set this up a little bit differently. Now I have the fork uh, stuck inside the head tube because I want to do a little bit of a fade. I wanna go from dark to light, you know, so I'm gonna have it really, really dark in the front and fade out to almost just the silver with the candy, lemon yellow over the back, that's gonna give me that kind of fade, that nice gradual fade, because I want this thing looking like it's going really, really fast going forward because uh, Alex Xavier's gonna burn rubber on this thing. So, that's again a beauty part of having these wires. Uh, I can take this on and off, take it on and off, and keep reusing these wires uh, as long as I need to and, and, and kind of shape it to where I need it to be. And again, setting it up to spray the way you see it is, is really the most ideal in terms of making sure, especially with something like this where we're gonna kinda do a fade uh, to keep everything consistent. So it's kinda like spraying a candy on a car. If you had parts, you want them together so everything matches, the door handles and the mirrors look the same as the actual door that they go on because one or two extra coats or on one or the other is gonna make one lighter, one darker. So you kinda wanna keep everything consistent. Uh, and also when I'm spraying this, um, in the video I'll kind of try to do it squared up so you guys can see what it looks like going down. But keep in mind if you're spraying this at home and if you do have a, a fan 
if, if it's you're in a booth or if you're just open air but you have a fan for air movement, you're going to kind of want to go with the overspray, right? So if your fan is pushing air away from you, you kind of want to have that overspray. If you're spraying a darker color, don't forget, it's going to start falling to the back, right? Or vice versa. If I have it, if my fan is moving this way, I kind of would rather have my overspray going to the front so it's evacuated off the surface and not continually dragged over the back. Because what will happen is you'll start getting these, same thing like I talked about with the metallic, where uh, it starts to get really um, dirty looking. And it's just these little balls of overspray and kind of that dust. And m most of the time when you have uh, like pearls or metallics, it'll start to look like little dots. Solid colors, not so much because there's nothing to refract that light, but when you see those pearls, and, and then again with metallics, whether you have that coarse actual metallic and you put candy over that, it'll look dirty. It'll look kind of grainy, like almost like popcorn ceiling. So that's something to keep in mind is air movement. You kind of want to evacuate your overspray off the surface as fast as possible. So for the video, I'm just going to do it so you guys can see it, but just keep that in mind, especially something smaller like this, not a big deal, but if you're spraying something really critical and you want to have that real nice clean fade. You want to know where your overspray is going because by the time you're done you don't realize it and you're going to have all that that graininess. So enough about that. We're going to talk about the actual colors. So uh, we already did the Hot Rod Sparkle White so that's done and out of the way. So I have my Candy 2.0 Lemon Yellow and I have our Wicked ear, uh, Pearl Yellow and then I have our Candy Grabber Orange and our Wicked Pearl Orange. So those are going to go together. So what I'm going to do is start light and build up my values darker. Obviously that's easier. A lot of these colors are semi-opaque, semi meaning there's enough color and vibrance there, but it's not going to cover over black or dark colors very easily. It's going to have that dark tint. So again, your ground coat is kind of going to dictate how bright or how dark that color is. So we have a silver ground coat, so it's going to be very easy for me to put the yellow over that silver and then work my way darker because I want to end up finishing with really kind of a pearl candy uh, orange. So what I did is in this cup here, I have a little bit of candy grabber mixed with the pearl. So we'll talk about that in a second. So we're going to start. This is iridescent bright yellow. So I mix all these, the pearls and metallics, I really like mixing it. If you guys remember, three to one. So it's three parts in color to one part 40-50 and then a little bit of reduction, about 10%. Uh, if you're doing it with an airbrush or smaller tip size, you can go 20-25%. That's not a big deal. That's kind of the nice thing about having that ability to adjust the product because of the, the thickness of the 40-50. It is a little bit thicker if you guys are spraying anything, if you're used to the 40-30. So keep that in mind. You can, you have that ability to, to reduce a little bit more without really skating that product out. It has a nice hold together, it has a nice film finish to it and, it, and it's got a great look. So, three to one. So I have three parts iridescent yellow, one part 4050, and a splash of reducer. So what I'm going to do is spray from the back and work my way forward. I'm going to leave probably about that much in the back here for this yellow. And I'll continue the yellow up about halfway, and I'll stop. And then I have my pearl orange. This is wicked pearl orange. This is mixed the same way. This is neat with uh, no candy in it. So it's going to be three to one as well with the 4050. So then I'll spray that towards the front. And then as I move to the front, this is the finish here. And this is basically the two of these mixed together. So I get a little bit of that gold look from the pearl of the Wicked in with the orange. It's got a cool little shimmer cast to it. But then because I want it to be darker, I added a little bit of our grabber orange. So this is kind of a candy pearl. And then what I'll do is fade that to the front and down the forks. And then once that's all dry, I'll come back in and kind of tint and shade with the candy neat. Or what you could do is just continually add candy to this as well to slowly kind of create that candy base coat. But once I have a color key base, because I'm going to go over with orange, candy orange over an orange base coat, uh, it's going to be a lot easier to spray and have that candy look nice and even without having any kind of issues because I'm not trying to cover something like white where you would see any kind of splotchiness. So, uh, we're going to get this all in my gun and I'm going to start. And actually the nice thing too is while we're doing this, like when I talked about with the, the hot rod white, um, I'm not cleaning out my gun every time because I had sealer silver. I just kind of blew out what was in there. I put in a hot rod sparkle white. Whatever silver is left was going to go back over this silver and then a the hot rod sparkle white is going to go over that. So now I'm going with the yellow as I move from my yellow to my orange is actually not a bad thing that my yellow is still on the gun because it's just going to kind of get lost as I move to the orange. So that's the nice thing about working 
lighter to darker, especially if you're doing something like this where you're mixing these colors, you kind of want all this to kind of blend together for a nice transition. You don't have to worry about going and cleaning your gun every single time unless you start getting a little bit of tip dry, but that's totally beside the point. So. I'm going to get this loaded up my gun, same gun, I'm going to use my LPH-80. Uh, if you guys are doing stuff at home, you can use an airbrush as well. 0.5 is going to be kind of the limit uh, because of the pearls that are in here. The 0.5 is going to be kind of the, the threshold of where it's not going to get clogged in the tip. So if you have a TH, TH2, those are 0.6. Uh, the, the TH is a 0.5, the TH2 is a 6, or just an eclipse with a 0.5. It's going to work very well too. Um, but for, for me, I'm going to use my LPH-80 because uh, that works great across the board. So I'm going to get it in my cup, get it in the gun, and we are going to start spraying. So I'll see you guys in a minute. Hey guys, I'm back. I have the booth running. I have my yellow in the cup and I'm ready to spray. I try to get this at an angle so it'll show up well on camera. You guys can see what I'm doing. Uh, but again, I'm just going to start from the back of these chain stays, these back bars, and just do a little bit of yellow kind of up to where this seat post is. Kind of Less than, less than halfway up the, this, this top tube, this down tube. So we're just gonna kind of fade right in this area right here out to the silver because what I wanna do is actually do that lemon yellow over that transition out to the very back of the frame. So I'll rely on that silver sealer with the hot rod white to be the ground coat for that candy lemon yellow. So that's gonna look really, really cool. So this is what I'm talking about, same thing, LPH 80, same air pressure, running around 15 PSI, and I close up my fan just a little bit so it's a little more concentrated so I don't have all that overspray, kind of running the risk of, for this color it's not a big deal because it is yellow, if you do have yellow overspray that way, not a big deal because the orange is actually going to blend into that very nicely, but as we work to the front, I kind of want to keep that orange to the front of the frame and not have it fall back onto that yellow so it doesn't look like little spots. So I'm going to get my mask on and we're going to start spraying. We are back, the yellow is all dry. Uh, you can see exactly what it is I was talking about. I'm trying to keep it off the back of these uh, rear bars, the chain stays, just so I have a room for a, a little bit of a color change with my lemon yellow. So, now I have my pearl orange. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna kinda just go over this overlap a little bit and bring my color right to the top of this head tube here. And again, if overspray gets over that, it's not a problem. I'm more concerned about this transition to the yellow uh, where my, my second color in the front is gonna just darken this up. So again, we wanna be from dark to light down the back of the bike. So another thing I, I wanted to mention too is uh, if you're using colors that aren't so close in the family in terms of yellow, red, orange, that type of thing, um, you could also, uh, and this is where the 4050 comes into play, you can over reduce these colors or increase the transparency as much as you want without actually over reducing them. What you're doing is you're extending the color with the 4050 because that 4050 has a lot more body to it. Uh, you can extend that color, make it really transparent, but still keep that sprayability and the film build uh, to really push certain colors that typically might not blend together very well, but you can really, really get that tinted color, almost like a candy, uh, with, with mixing with that 4050, it allows you to really play with your ratios. There's no right or wrong, you know? If you were, like I said, I'm doing this three to one, you can go six to one. You can go two to one, you can go one to one, or you can go the opposite way with the candy, or the, the base coat color, and that you could take this pearl yellow and mix it six to one with the 4050 with six parts of the 4050 and one part yellow, which would make it extremely thin, and probably too thin actually to do anything. But that would be very cool just to kind of, as a last step, if you wanted to just spray over those two colors to help kind of blend them in, you have a little bit of that base coat in there. And, and so it's really limitless in terms of how you mix and, and what you do. I'm just giving you kind of the basics of how I mix these colors. Um, but you can take it from there and, and really play with those ratios to overextend those colors to make it really transparent if you kind of wanted that seamless blend out in anything. So obviously the, the less concentrated the color is, it's going to be very easy to get that nice gradation of color, that nice even fade without that stipple effect. So that all goes in being able to put it on heavy enough where it doesn't have dry spray, but not so heavy that you actually oversaturate because of the color content. So 
This is uh, the end of my spiel. Uh, I'm gonna start spraying uh, our Wicked Orange right now. And you're gonna see, again, right about to here to here and that's gonna be good. Okay guys, we're back, our orange is all dry. Uh, and you can see, again, I don't know if you guys were watching when I was spraying that, I was trying to go back into my color. I, I don't like taking my color and going over the color that's already sprayed, because what's happening is you're gonna slowly, again, we were talking about the overspray and building up. You'll start having overspray carry over onto this to get that blend, and it's gonna be dry spray. So the only way to really alleviate that would be to actually spray this with a coat of 4050 as, as a wet bed and spray your, your color over that and it'll fall into it and it'll be a little bit softer. But that's a lot of work and it's more material and every time you put more material on, you, you're making everything thicker and you're increasing your dry time. So that works for certain applications, but for this, I, I try to do kind of the same mentality of a, a reverse blend, right? So you want to go, into your color. So I was starting light and going darker into my orange. And what that's doing is actually kind of pushing that overspray away from the yellow into the area that I know is gonna be nice and, and medium wet with the orange. And it's gonna give a nice soft transition. That's something that a little a little different in terms of the mentality. Everybody kind of likes to go off and it's, it's easier to kind of wisp off. But if you practice this technique, you'll find that it really does come in handy in a lot of things to trying to keep your color consolidated into a certain area. Before you know it, you keep stretching it out and out and out. Before you know it, now all of a sudden there's orange all the way to here. And now you're like, ah, oh, now you're gonna go back with yellow or, or fix it that way. So just something to keep in mind. And you can see now I did spin this around because I am gonna do the last color of my, my base coat color, which is a mix, the one-to-one -one of the pearl uh, yellow and the pearl orange. And then I added a little bit of grabber orange to kind of darken this up a little bit. So again, we want light to dark, dark to light. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep this contained towards the front. So because my overspray is going that way and the airflow is going this way, I don't want to have this, this darker orange color start to fall on the back of this. Uh, so. That's basically the end of that, and I'm going to spray probably just a coat and a half of this color in the orange, and then we're going to start going to our candy.